Today, I've got this bag of moldable plastic. This stuff is thermal plastic that when heated up, can be molded. Now, my immediate thought is it's moldable plastic, why not turn it into a mold? A moldable mold, a reusable mold. So today I'm gonna try my best to try and figure out how best to use this sort of stuff. Step one, do not put it in a plastic container like I did. This does not work, it makes a huge mess and it's really hard to get out in one piece. You can see here, if your water isn't hot enough, it will not all melt. So I decided to get a metal bowl and some boiling hot water. Here is my second mistake. Well, the canola oil is a good idea actually, to stop it from sticking. No, the second mistake is trying to mold something so intricate and detailed and not flat. This plastic gets really hard and it's not stretchy and flexible like silicone. So molding round things is not really gonna work unless you are able to somehow get the plastic off or if you're willing to cut into the plastic. But then again, the plastic is really hard and cutting it was a bit of a pain. So I decided to scrap that idea and move to some more flat things. Talking of flat things, keep the heated up plastic in a flat shape that way it melts faster because it has more surface area to contact with the hot water. One of the most flat things that I know of are walls. And also I don't really mind if walls get ruined. So I'm just going to make a little wall that I'm going to make then a mold out of in the thermal plastic. I give the wall a black mod podge base coat. And I also hit it with a heat gun and that will slightly melt the, the foam and anywhere there's glue it won't melt. So in the edges on like the grout lines, the bricks look really pronounced and it has a really interesting texture. I've also got this old miniature base made of cork and sand and I thought I'd give it a go on this as well. And this is why you give it a black Mod Podge base coat because Glue would have saved this thing its life, most likely. You don't need all of the plastic to be clear and entirely melted. You just need enough of it to get into the cracks and details. If you have some flat white pieces, that's fine. And then I'm going to work it around and make a lip to catch any plaster that I put in it and hopefully make it a bit of a flat bottom. And now here the poor base is gone after taking it apart because all of that plastic has stuck to all of the cork. I suppose just because it's made of like a woody sort of very porous material, it just stuck very well. So giving a coat of a glue or something like that would have helped a lot to keep this together. But I mean, I've got a mold of it now, so I don't really need it. And I just clean out all of the excess with a scalpel, a crafting tool, and even an old toothbrush. After it's all clean, I give it a spray of a canola oil, dab away any bubbles, and then put in my plaster. If you wanted, you could dye the plaster and I end up dyeing it black when I do the wall. Once that's done, it's just a little bit of work to peel it out of the mold. It does crack in quite a few places I do do a second one and I get a few less cracks, but what I found was if you put a little handle on the back, like stick a little stick in the back of the plaster and cut it off when you're done, you have a little something to pull on and tug it out. But all in all, just with some super glue, this fixes it up really nice and it works really well for ruins, which I'm going for. Well, at least I'm going for them now that, now that it's all ruined.
once the wall is nice and dry, I gave it a coat of a spray paint primer as well as a matte varnish. This ends up doing nothing for it. Maybe, maybe it does something, but it doesn't do anything very well. So I'm just going to give it a coat of canola oil. I'm going to wipe off any of the bubbles because those will form in the mold and it will look bad. And then I'm going to cover it in a sheet of heated plastic. When I'm heating the plastic, what I'm doing is I'm just going to work it into a big sheet and then put it into the hot water to melt and then pour all the hot water out and just pull it off the bottom of the bowl. With a metal bowl, it comes off really easy. The great part about this is it's, there's no harsh chemicals, it's really easy to work with, you've got a great working time, and it dries really quick. The downsides are that you can only really make flat things, and it comes really hard plastic. But if you have the right things, I think you could get some really cool moulds out of this. And peeling it out, you can see that maybe the glue wasn't entirely dry or that the uh, plastic just hardened and really held in all of that foam. Now where it stuck the worst is actually where the texture was the deepest. The grooves were really deep uh, and the texture of the stone was really indented. So if anything, if you're making something like this, you want the stones to get stuck in there because that means you're making a nice detailed wall. It is very messy to clean up though. And you can see how, with how much color is getting on my hands, that it definitely wasn't dry. You can see the difference from the top to the bottom on how exaggerated the details are at the top and how bad they are at the bottom, how flat it is at the bottom. Also a crack formed in it, I think that's because I put two pieces together midway through drying time. So I'm just going to heat up another piece and stick it in there to hold it down. I'm then going to add some black dye to my plaster and get pouring that into the rock mold. Of course, I've covered this in some canola oil as well, making sure to dab away all of the bubbles. Now, I don't know if the oil has a adverse reaction to the plaster, but the plaster faces are very soft when they come out and they just need some more time to dry in the air. <laughs> and it cracks a lot. Uh, thank God they're ruins. At least then, now they're ruins. If you're moulding with something a bit more rigid, uh, like a resin, or even using the moldable plastic inside the moldable plastic, then you'd get something a little bit better, a little bit more strong, and not as prone to cracking. But even with the plaster, you can piece it together. And the texture comes out looking really, really great in at least half of it. Now, originally I didn't really have an idea of what to do with these things. I was just kind of making them and seeing how they turned out. But after kind of looking at it, I thought it would make a good set of ruins, but I don't know what as. So I decided to make a little display diorama for taking pictures of miniatures. And I think it turned out pretty nice. So I just stuck everything together and covered it in some peat moss. And because I didn't cover this peat moss in water, it dried in a decent amount of time. And once that is all dry, I dusted it all off and added some greenery. And I think this looks pretty good as some slapdash ruins.
and from basically two different ideas and no ideas at all, I've come up with something that looks pretty nice. And these molds, I think I'm going to use them in future to make some sets of ruins, buildings, and stuff like that for terrain. I don't know if I'll ever use this circle one again. I might melt it down and try to clean it up a bit. I'll let you know how well that goes. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week with something different.